A biopic or biographical film is a film that chronicles and dramatizes the life of a non-fictional or historical person. The popularity of biopics has grown significantly in the last 20 years because Hollywood loves to cash in on dead celebrities. Some movies are well received by the public while others are seen as just a mockery and are highly criticized. Here are five of the worst black biographical films of all time. The story of the DeBarge family is one of the most tragic music stories out there. They rose to fame in the late 1970s, early 1980s through the Switch Band and the group titled DeBarge with their R&B hits There'll Never Be, I'll Call Your Name, and Rhythm of the Night. But the personal lives of the siblings were filled with addiction and incarcerations. The African-American adult channel TV One is best known for their 13-year-long black music documentary program titled Unsung. The franchise is so successful that they launched the Hollywood version. And then in 2015, TV One announced another spinoff, the Unsung Films, which would produce made-for-television movies slash biopics. The network aired their first installment, Love Under New Management, The Mickey Howard Story, on the network on June 12, 2016. And then came The Bobby DeBarge Story, produced by Swirl Films. The film chronicles the life of the oldest sibling and founder of the DeBarge Group. He served as both the producer and mentor for his siblings. And throughout his career, he struggled with substance abuse, then got busted for trafficking in the late 1980s. He died at age 39 from AIDS-related complications in 1995. The biopic was written by Norman Vance Jr. and directed by Russ Parr. What's the matter with you? Bobby! I wouldn't necessarily call this the worst biopic ever. The production isn't the problem. The problem is the acting and storytelling. The biopic failed to tell viewers who aren't familiar with Bobby DeBarge details about his life that they wouldn't be able to find out on his Wikipedia page. Before I get into the acting, I want to talk about the casting, which was done by famed director slash producer Lee Daniels, who is no stranger to casting big names in Black Hollywood for his productions. Some of the casting choices made absolutely no sense, like singer Lloyd as Gregory Williams, who founded Switch and produced most of their music, and Big Boy from Outkast as Motown Records founder Barry Gordy. Then, aside from the bad wigs, the actors cast to play the younger DeBarge siblings were actually older than the actor playing the oldest sibling, Bobby, and it was very obvious. Playing Bobby DeBarge is Rashawn Fagan, who's had TV and film roles in Spider-Man 2, Disney's Camp Rock, and Shake It Up. I'm not saying he's not a good actor, but his portrayal of Bobby was erratic for most of the film and made him look like a complete maniac. Where you go? Oh, okay, that's all right. That's all right, cause, cause y'all was getting replaced anyway. <laughs> with, with actual musicians that was actually good. Yeah, bye. The film jumped back and forth from the past to the present day and made it hard for viewers to follow the story. At times, the editing and continuity was kind of all over the place. And in the end, it made the DeBarge family tragedy look like a complete joke, even though the DeBarge siblings co-produced the film. But this isn't the worst black biopic, so let's get on with the list. All Eyes on Me is a 2017 biographical film about hip-hop legend Tupac Shakur, who died in 1996 at age 25. The film chronicles his tumultuous life and career. The synopsis reads, The true and untold story of prolific rapper, actor, poet, 
and activist Tupac Shakur, from his early days in New York to his status as one of the world's most recognized and influential voices. Spoiler alert, they did not give us the untold truth. Instead, they crafted the movie around some of the things Tupac said in his famous prison interview, as well as some Vibe magazine articles, which we will discuss later. Playing Tupac is Demetrius Ship Jr., who made his acting debut in All Eyes on Me. Before the film, Demetrius was just a regular guy working at a 24-hour fitness center. He submitted an audition tape when the casting call for Men Who Resemble Tupac went out in the year 2011. For his first acting role, he did pretty good in my opinion. The biopic opened in theaters on June 14, 2017 on what would have been Tupac's 46th birthday. Unfortunately, the film received a wave of criticism from fans, film critics, and those close to Tupac. The writing and direction weren't too good. All Eyes on Me failed to capture the complexity of Tupac and spent a large portion of the film focusing on a false romance between him and Jada Pinkett Smith, who went to Maryland's Baltimore School for the Arts with the hip-hop icon. This angered Jada, who says that they were only casual friends. She tweeted, and I quote, Pac never read me that poem. I didn't know that poem existed until it was printed in his book. Pac never said goodbye to me before leaving for Los Angeles. He had to leave abruptly, and it wasn't to pursue his career. I've never been to any of Pac's shows by his request. We never had an argument backstage. Former hip hop journalist Kevin Powell filed a lawsuit in New York federal court against Lionsgate, Morgan Creek Productions, and others, alleging that portions of the film are pulled from interviews he did with Tupac for Vibe magazine in the 1990s. Kevin Powell also admitted to fabricating some of the stories in his Tupac articles. In the suit, his lawyers writes, the name and character of Nigel in the original work was specifically created by the plaintiff without the authority or encouragement of Tupac Shakur. This made up character of Nigel was the embellishment of a real life character that was central to the narrative in plaintiff's article. This made up character was copied and pasted into defendant's film to play the same central character and role in the infringing work as he did in the original work. Boys in the Hood director and close friend to Tupac, John Singleton, helped develop the biopic, but dropped out in 2015 because of creative differences with the studio. He blasted the movie on The Big Tigger Show, saying that it was worse than Lifetime's 2014 Aaliyah biopic. What about that other movie? Savage. Movie. <laughs> There's the, another the movie. The Debacle. Oh, wow. Yeah, that... I don't know if y'all know what Debacle, don't know what Debacle means, look it up. So are you, you that gonna... displeased with the situation? Is I'm it, that displeased by the oh, situation. Let me, let me ask. What? Are you displeased because of the final product or that you're just, you didn't get to do it? A little bit of both, but a lot because, okay, let me put this in perspective. When Spike Lee was doing Malcolm X, he had everybody on every street corner in Brooklyn and New York saying, Spike, don't mess up Malcolm X. Right. This is so important to us. Don't mess up Malcolm The people that were involved in this movie did not have that. They didn't have that pressure at all, you know. What I mean, they just made a movie. They didn't. They didn't think of it as a cultural event. They didn't mm -hmm. think of it in t as terms of something that was, um, uh, uh, something that affected our generation. You know what I mean? Right. You know, like the people who, who, who are younger, who don't really understand, you know, the legacy of Tupac and Mar Shakur. They just went to the movie and like they mm -hmm. see a rap star, mm -hmm. but but dude was much more than a rap star. You know what I mean? So, I mean, that's why I'm really upset. So, Indeed. that movie, you're not going to, you know, they, they they made the Aaliyah version of Pop. Oh, man. Wow. Oh, you know what wow. I mean? Like, worse. Ooh. Worse than that. I mean, like, <laughs> oh, wow. All Eyes on Me is extremely pointless and uninspired. This is just white Hollywood trying to straddle the success of the notorious B.I.G. and straight out of Compton biopics. John Singleton's last comment brings me to the next movie on this list. Aaliyah, the princess of R&B, is a 2014 made-for-television biographical film about American R&B singer and actress Aaliyah, who tragically died at the young age of 22. 
The film was directed by Bradley Walsh and based on the biography, Aaliyah, More Than a Woman, by Christopher John Farley. It premiered on Lifetime on November 15, 2014, and faced intense criticism from viewers and people close to the singer. But before I get into the film details, I just want to remind everyone that the film was doomed from the very beginning. The family of the singer didn't think that Lifetime was the best company to produce a film on her. And her uncle Barry Hankerson, who controls the rights to her masters, also refused to authorize the use of her music in the film. There were numerous reports about possible biopics about the life and career of Aaliyah for several years. But it wasn't until 2014 that a film would actually start making its way off the ground. Actress and dancer Zendaya was chosen to star in Lifetime's original movie after she was seen paying homage to the singer a few times. Zendaya was set to record four of Aaliyah's songs for the film. This decision caused intense backlash because Zendaya is a light-skinned biracial girl who looks absolutely nothing like the singer. And some people argued that Zendaya did not have the vocal range to match Aaliyah. The producers apparently thought that all you needed was a side part and baggy clothes to portray singer Aaliyah. Zendaya exited the film following backlash from family and fans, and then another biracial actress named Alexandra Shipp, who's not related to Demetria Shipp Jr., was announced to play the role of Aaliyah, causing even more backlash. The oh-so-messy Wendy Williams really wanted the film to happen, so she stepped in as executive producer. So let's start by taking a look at the cast, which mainly consists of biracial actors. Aaliyah and her brother Rashad weren't dark-skinned, but they also didn't look mixed or biracial. So the casting of mixed-race actors for younger Aaliyah younger Rashad, adult Aaliyah, and adult Rashad is very confusing. The actors cast to play Missy Elliott and Timberland were also pretty light in complexion. But I'm sure most black people are very aware of the biracial fetish that Hollywood has. But that's a totally different video. Anyway, Alexandra Shipp is not that great of an actress. Her dancing in the film wasn't too good and neither was her singing voice. Aside from her performance, the film was filmed with cheesy, melodramatic dialogue, and the delivery is like they're reciting a poem in a soap opera. The success of Age wasn't just because of the brilliant business strategy that my Uncle Barry put forth, but it was also the magic between two creatively connected souls. And from that magic came a completely new sound. That's what happens when you go left and everyone else is going right. Something that made viewers uncomfortable was the directors and writers romanticizing the illegal and inappropriate relationship between 14-year-old Aaliyah and R. Kelly. You didn't even look at me when I walked into your studio. You ain't gotta look at the sun to know it's shining. The movie also credited him for giving her confidence. Apparently, R. Kelly upgraded her style by just handing her a pair of his sunglasses. The storytelling and direction was so lazy and failed to properly chronicle the events and milestones in her life. In the 90s, Missy Elliott was still a plus-size woman with a short haircut. But in the film, she appeared to be thinner and wore nothing but Adidas tracksuits which, in fact, she didn't really wear until years after Aaliyah's death, as well as the weight loss. Years passed in the film, and Missy's character was still wearing the same clothes. 
The movie made the obnoxious Damon Dash look like Prince Charming and her protector. And I also forgot to mention that his character was also played by a biracial actor. The film is so bad and there's so much to be said about it. But it was deeply hurtful to people close to the singer, who urged fans not to support it. This is a lifetime production, so we shouldn't expect too much considering some of the biopics produced by them. After Alexandra Shipp's performance in a movie, I question how she was able to book more acting gigs. A second Aaliyah biopic was said to be in the works starring social media comedian B. Simone as the late singer, but that never came to fruition. After seeing these clips, I'm actually happy that movie didn't happen. The 2016 biographical film, Nina, is written and directed by Cynthia Mort and chronicles the life and story of the late jazz musician and classical pianist Nina Simone, with a look at her rise to fame and the relationship between her and her manager, Clifton Henderson. The film stars David Oyelowo, Ella Thomas, Mike Epps, and, wait for it, Zoe Saldana as Nina Simone. The film is just wrong on so many levels, so let me do a quick breakdown. The Nina Simone biopic was over 11 years in the making, with Mary J. Blige playing the beloved musician. But because of scheduling conflict, they were forced to recast the role and somehow decided that Zoe Saldana was the right fit. This movie caused outrage because Zoe is a lighter skinned Latina and does not have the phenotype or physical likeness to even play Nina Simone. This is another example of anti black and colorist casting in Hollywood. Nina's daughter Lisa criticized the film saying, My mother was raised at a time when she was told her nose was too wide, her skin was too dark. Appearance wise, this is not the best choice. End quote. The white people behind the film said, screw you guys, and decided they were going to do the film anyway. The world erupted when photos and the trailer were released to the public, which showed Zoe Saldana wearing blackface, prosthetic nose and teeth, and a bad afro. I want to ask you, when it comes to just uh, the casting that we've seen in Hollywood lately, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, upset about certain roles, in particular the Nina Simone one. What are your thoughts about the casting of the Nina Simone role? You know, that's a hard question. What are your true thoughts about the casting for Nina Simone role? Do you know, people have particular thoughts about that. I feel like you do as well. What are your thoughts on that? Do you have any thoughts on Nina Simone's story and, and how that went about? Zoe defended the role and film by saying her physical likeness to Nina shouldn't matter since she's just playing a character, failing to realize that Nina Simone is an actual real human being and not just some fictional character. Simone's estate's Twitter account tweeted at Zoe, writing, Please take Nina's name out of your mouth for the rest of your life. Hopefully, people begin to understand this is painful, gut-wrenching heartbreaking, nauseating, soul crushing. It shall pass, but for now. I have a video on the Nina Simone debacle and I suggest you guys go watch it after this video. Now let's get into the film itself. Zoe's portrayal of Nina was nothing more than an SNL parody. What are you looking for? Don't sneak up on me like that. Where are my earrings? I have them. You're lying. I know who I am. I'm a black woman. That's who I am. Her Nina voice and accent were terrible. Not sure whose idea it was to make Zoe sing the songs herself, but her singing voice was also not that great and she butchered the numbers. Black is the color. Like, if you're gonna let white people put you in blackface and prosthetics, at least do the role some justice. 
Aside from the prosthetics and bad acting, the writing and direction were also terrible. They made Nina look like an unstable, belligerent alcoholic and put black eyeshadow around her eyes to appear as though she never slept a day in her life. Styling and costuming didn't make any sense for the time period, like this one scene in the 1960s where they were dressed as though they were in the 2010s wearing Nikes and Adidas track pants. And most importantly, they failed to show how ingrained Nina Simone was within the civil rights movement, which makes the movie even more offensive and insulting. After the racial uprising in 2020, Zoe Saldana formally apologized for playing African-American singer, songwriter, and civil rights activist Nina Simone after years of doubling down. I should have never played Nina. I should have never played Nina. Um, I should have done everything in my power with the leverage that I had 10 years ago, which was a different leverage, but it was leverage nonetheless. I should have tried everything in my power to cast a black woman to play an exceptionally perfect black woman. Make sure you guys check out my video on the debacle. And of course, I couldn't do a list of the worst black biopics ever made without including the Michael Jackson story. I know you guys saw the thumbnail and spent the entire video waiting for me to cover this. The time has come. Man in the Mirror, The Michael Jackson Story is a 2004 Canadian-American biographical TV movie produced for VH1. It stars Flex Alexander as the king of pop Michael Jackson and follows his tumultuous life in the public eye. It was released in August 2004, a month prior to the beginning of Michael's criminal trial. I don't really know what to say about this film other than this is a complete joke and mockery of Michael Jackson. And quite frankly, I don't even know where to start. Mother, somebody tell get me Paris something. What's going on? Get them out of here. Yes, I don't want yes. them to see this. Okay, come on. Start packing. We're going back to Neverland. Bobby, I can't bring another child to this world. Call the lawyers. Cancel the surrogate. It's too late, Michael. She's already pregnant. But look at this, Bobby. Look at this. Oh, it's the eyes. Yeah, beautiful eyes. The acting, the dancing, the wardrobe, and the horrendous talcum powder makeup made people question whether the film is a parody. The storytelling is just bad. When the film was released, Michael Jackson himself spoke out and blasted the film. In an interview with Hip Hop News Uncensored, Flex says he took the role because they offered him a good amount of money, but now says years later, he's able to laugh at himself in the film. Please leave some names of other bad biopics in the comments below, like this video, and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.